everyone, and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's uh, special show tonight on um, celebrating Black History Month. Today is the last day of Black History Month here across the country and even here, here in Hawaii and in other parts of the country. And uh, we had an extra day this year, so we probably had a lot more things to discuss and talk about. And I'd like to introduce our panelists today. Uh, Professor Randall, uh, who has been with us many times and has shared her perspectives on a number of issues. She's a retired professor of law and also the author and the editor for um, a number of publications addressing the issues with regard to race and discrimination and is a recognized scholar and expert in this area. Uh, T.K. Brown Taylor is also with us this time. She's kind of new to us and it's kind of fun to have her here. Uh, she is the owner and uh, director of Brownstone Mediation in Atlanta and works in human resources with families uh, addressing issues in um, mediation in that area. And of course, I'm Sandra Sims. I'm a retired judge here in, the, in uh, Honolulu. And uh, let's get going. So like, again, we talked about this being the last day of uh, celebrating Black history. Black history began, of course, in the 1920s with Dr. Carter Woodson, who began uh, the need to recognize at that time, it's called Negro History Month. But the idea being that our the history of what um, uh, African-Americans had done in this country had not been really told. And it was his part in addressing that and bringing to our attention as, as, as Black people and as well as people in the rest of the world, what we were doing and what we were about. Of course, that history has expanded uh, exponentially since that time. Uh, and so we have a lot more programs and a lot more information, a lot more literature, a lot more scholars who have written uh, and talked about what it means to be an African-American in this country. Uh, I recall a book that um, Marion Wright Edelman wrote a few years ago, actually it was many years ago, <laughs> called The Measure of Our Success. And she, of course, was the founder, co-founder of the Children's Defense Fund, among other, um, other accomplishments. And in that book, she began, I used to buy this book when my kids were young, and I'd give them to everyone who graduated from high school. It was The idea was this was a lessons for life that she had coined for her own sons. And the thing she mentioned in the beginning of that book was that being Black in America was utterly exhausting. Mm -hmm. She started off, it's utterly exhausting to be Black in America. So celebrating Black History Month, let's start with that perspective. And uh, I'm going to throw it to you, Professor. Uh, so, you know, I've been celebrating Black History Month or both for the month and for year round for decades. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm in my 70s, late 70s. And so this whole issue of celebrating Black, I've seen the, the movement from Black History Week, Negro History Week. Cause that's that's what right. It was, it was week. I forgot about it that. It was yeah. Negro History Week. And then uh, it, it moved to month. And during the 60s and 70s, when I was a teenager and a young adult, uh, it really expanded to what we now mm -hmm. know as Black History Month because mm -hmm. of the Black uh, power movement, the Black empowerment movement. Uh, and then Ford recognized it in 1976. So, mm -hmm. so the whole thing around Black History Month has been an evolution. Uh, and I... There's a lot of attention, but it's also very commercialized, uh, very capitalistic uh, in nature, uh, because that's what capitalists do. Uh, if there's money to be made, we'll find a way. <laughs> we'll find a way to make money without, yeah. increase, without increasing wages. So, spend exactly. More <laughs> exactly. That's exactly. Part. <laughs> So yes, that, that's, that's 
that's kind of my view of Black History Month now. As far as what I didn't do much, much of anything different. My, my son, who I lived with, took my grandsons to one parade related to Black History Month. But uh, we didn't actually do very much different. But then we read a lot of books. Uh, yeah. we, every Sunday, we're in the middle of, we're not reading a Black book right now, but we're reading the people's history of the United States with my 13-year-old. So, Oh, how cool is that? I love that. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. There it is. Yeah. And so we were just into slavery and just into stuff. So I don't, on a personal level, mm -hmm. I don't feel the need to do any particular sort of celebration because it's so integrated into everything I do. But it is necessary. Oh, absolutely. So I, I'm not I one think of so. the people who think that we should get Black History, get rid of Black History Month. I just think we've got to find a way to expand it and decommercialize it. Yeah, good point. Maybe impossible. Ah, we can figure something out. Okay. TK, what are your thoughts? I liken a few things that Professor Randall has already mentioned. Certainly with the capital capitalism, everything these days, Valentine's Day, I fuss and fight about Valentine's Day, because uh, I'm one of those, my husband and I, we celebrate love the entire year. So when I tell someone I didn't get anything for Valentine's Day, they look like I'm on the brink for divorce. <laughs> so well, at least you, you get on the next day to be on sale. You know? <laughs> right, or the next day, right? Right, right. So I'm not particularly upset about the capitalism, because I, I know to her point, everything that can do will be capitalized for, exactly. for to be able to make a dollar. But for me, black fatigue is real. <laughs> you mentioned wanting to start there. It it is. I happen to be in the HR space, so oh, I'm sure. I manage yeah. it. I manage it a little differently. Like I have a little more compassion to the the question that you pose. Um, in that whether it being exhausting, I absolutely think it's necessary. I am one of those people to say that I celebrate Black History every day <laughs> it's just not because you're here <laughs> exactly it's not limited for me it's i not have limited. as one person pointed out today <laughs> posting his picture he said i am black history I'm like good point good exactly. point and, and that's my point good exactly point, i am black history <laughs> and so for me it's very necessary mm -hmm. there's so much opportunity you she mentioned doing anything differently i personally will every year this month purchase 10 books by black authors of that's a good idea that i personally that's a great know idea. that that's i personally know idea. who are colleagues friends you know somewhere in my network if i don't personally know them usually i personally know them because there's so many people so many that are writing books now yeah yeah or that they know someone that i know and I was just sharing just yesterday, I was supposed to meet with a, a colleague in Missouri and she and I both sent each other emails probably on top of each other saying, hey, can we can we take a rain check? And at the end of her her signature line, she had her new book. And I said, oh my gosh, I need to add you to my book because I, I have only to tomorrow, February 29th, I got an extra day and I'm only at book six. So I need four more books. So to your point, that's something that I do absolutely yeah. every year to support those who are Black authors. Um, but oh, we should be doing things every day. Yeah, excellent. And we you are doing things. Yeah, I, I, we are. You Exactly. You are doing, you're, being here, you're doing that. And I the think- fatigue, The fatigue, I often, you know, my book, Dying While Black, is really about the impact that being Black in America has on Black health and yeah. how it is killing us uh, at a high rate, uh, everything. We're dying from every, and it's not just from institutional and systemic racism, which is a problem. It's also from the cumulative impact of just having to deal with every white person walking up to you and asking you some question that's about being black and you're so tired 
but you gotta kind of hold it in. You gotta be polite. You kind of have to answer the <laughs> question in a way that doesn't make you seem like you're angry and you gotta just stuff it down. Uh, especially if it's a new place of employment. You, I mean, yeah, I was going to say, TK, you probably encountered that uh, on a, that's kind of on a, on a regular, well, that's what you deal with most, I'm sure. I'm sure that comes up. Uh, Absolutely. Of, yeah. And, and even yeah. for myself personally, I had a conversation just this past week. It's been a week, uh, probably a little over a week, where I am being considered for a role and the person who is who is hiring is the senior leader of this organization mm -hmm. who I was recommended by a current supervisor. I'm trying not to yeah. <laughs> those that define don't define it so well me. that exactly you yes. don't want to define it so well that they can identify you. <laughs> yes. Or and, and honestly, I just really tell don't what mind. happened. Then we don't I have to get Yeah, I really don't mind. Um, but just having to explain, mm -hmm. you know, he, he came to the conversation as if I was looking for an opportunity, meaning to work for him. And although I don't mind it, would love it, and he is a beautiful person. That's who I call black people. And however, how he got my name was for, from a wonderful person. And the way I was talking as if... I presume the wonderful person means... Caucasian. Right, that's what I thought. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she just had to ask. Yes. And so, but how it was I positioned... Wanted to be clear. I wanted to be clear. <laughs> oh, no, you're fine. No, you're absolutely right. But how he positioned it is as if I was downplaying who my credentials, my qualifications, my experience, my work ethic. And it was none of that. It was me being operating in reality is that, that the opportunity, the, the playing field isn't level. So the same yeah, considerations, oh, the, the considerations as in, and he being a, you know, and he being a black leader, senior leader, it, you can't always assume male. You can't always assume their experience is the same. And so that exactly. was not male. I think that's, that yeah. I yeah. entered that conversation or entertained that conversation with him as if his experience was very similar, you know, same as mine. And of course he, and he gave really great feedback. He gave me some, and I accepted it, received it. But looking back on that conversation and, and certainly I, I want to follow up with him. Mm hmm the opportunity and the experience is is not the same. Um, and that's just a fact. Yeah. That's one of the things that I think that's important too when we're talking about dealing with, you know, Black History Month or dealing with all those those kinds of issues. People do have this tendency, even among ourselves, I think that we all have the same kind of experience. And certainly it's it's varied. I know here in 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 Hawaii, you know, blacks comprise what is less than less than three percent of the population anyway. So, you know, you're we see our role as more educating and providing uh, information that people really don't have and understand about Black folks more than anything else. I had the opportunity, and I've been working on this for quite a while, with the museum. We have an African-American film festival that we do uh, in February, and I've been on that committee now for 13, well, for 13 years, because that's, except for during the pandemic when we didn't have that. And one of the films, and this goes back to what you were talking about, Professor Randall, was, you know, how we began celebrating uh, Black History Month was a film we showed was The Five Diamonds. And it has to do with the um, 1969 student movement uh, that took over the colleges, City College in New York, um, which kind of began what you were talking about, Professor, that whole movement of changing in the 60s. I've I'm, I'm like you, I'm old enough to remember when this happened. And the college was taken over and we began, that's when the whole process of the evolution of Black education, more scholars doing more writing began kind of there. Before that, you know, we just had these little, you know, history expert excerpts and stuff. And so it chronicled that whole movement and how that began Black studies. We didn't have Black studies before then. Uh, not particularly. And then that sort of, as you say, the notion of having uh, what we do come out and be known to everyone, all of a sudden 
<laughs> there's this whole body of uh, of uh, of information that's uh, and scholars and perspectives and exposing quite honestly what our history the history of this country really 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 was um, that got us to maybe here there was a at one point they were talking about celebrating the the 50th anniversary of that of that that uh, that uprising it led to a lot I mean it was quite a powerful film if you have a chance uh, take a look at it but um, that's kind of helped us to get to this place where, you know, there are all these different perspectives, uh, even among, even among black folks with regard to where they are, what they think, what they choose, uh, and what is important, what is not important. And then you run up against <laughs> the backlash <laughs> from folks saying, what are you talking about? Why are you sharing those things? Or, you know, which gets to the exhaustion. <laughs> well, the I backlash. Know, just... Yeah, I think you're right. The, and and the backlash is uh, well, it, it it's always been around. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah I it's mean, vocal it, now, much more vocal. It's, maybe. it's more vocal, more visible. It's different in uh, aptitude, but not into kind. I mean, there's more of it, but there's always been backlash to. Uh, the anti-blackness of America has always been present and people have always uh, uh, acted upon it. Uh, none of, uh, I, I was going to say none black people, but that would be a misstatement because there are anti-black black people. Yeah, uh, that's kind of <laughs> it's getting to TK's point was you got, you got all perspectives here, and, you and know? So the, the part of the perspective that, that has to be recognized is is that there are people from all different backgrounds who don't really want to learn more, who don't, for different reasons, I grant you that. And I, I, I recognize that some of the anti-Blackness from Black people come from not wanting to minimize the pain by not yeah. having to deal with white people approaching them about shit. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I... I I'm sorry. <laughs> don't believe that. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I, and and so that uh, you know, the, so that 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 that's where the, the, I, I recognize where the anti-blackness from black people come, and it's a different source, which means we have to do different things to address it. That we can't just say it's anti-blackness, uh, but the anti-blackness. And that's the same thing. I think we have to look among different racial groups as too. Anti-blackness for non-whites is often born out of wanting to be integrated into the white society. And this and the certificate for being integrated is anti-blackness, whether yeah. they know the it privilege. or not. And so this is an interesting question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, black. I mean, and, and uh, it's been from the beginning of American history when in 1792 uh, the Congress passed the law and George Washington signed it, saying that uh, citizenship was limited to free white people. So from the very beginning, free white men, free white men, exactly. Except the law said people. It's just that they, they didn't. Yeah, but women it. weren't people, but, and enslaved exactly. people, enslaved <laughs> weren't people. Those are, didn't you didn't have to redefine yeah, it because they we knew. We just talked about that with my grandmother, <laughs> people, right? They yeah. knew that people yeah. only meant right. You know. Yeah, and so so the the price of admission to the United States of America has always been anti-blackness, and that yeah. has gone through. And whether it's written into the law. It's been written into the culture, and and yeah, I I I give you this. Many people reject it. Many many non-black people reject the anti-blackness. No, that's true. But many people, mo many most people of every group accept it because it is the price of admission into American society. And it, I think, anti-black black people, 
Black I'm people who are anti-Black. I'm scary. Are hoping that if they are anti-Black, people will not see that they're Black. That they, they will have the price of admission into American society. Look, I'm just like you. I hey. think we saw that in effect recently at that, uh, what is it, that CPAC thing where uh, that person was talking about his presidential campaign and uh, Tim how Scott. that uh, that people would uh, would vote for him because they like his shoes or something something. Ridiculous. Oh yes, I know you talk. <laughs> I'm gonna well, leave it there. We kind of that's not that's not why we're, well, we're here. here but nonetheless, <laughs> but, the, but Black History Month, the backlash. What are we doing? The backlash to anti-black to to Black History Month. If is born in anti-blackness wherever, for whatever group is going against it. They may not understand that's where it's born because you don't have to understand. The you, yeah, exactly, 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 exactly. TK has her brain twerking there. I'm, I'm seeing it. Well, you all <laughs> said a lot and every time you say something, I... <laughs> The, the first thing I was going to share to the anti-blackness in those that 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 are black and then those that are white that Professor Rhonda was sharing. On the white side, it's now cool and comfortable to be an ally. And so that has changed the landscape of where we are, where from those that are none of, of, of non-African descent or, 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 or who are Black, ally is becoming a very cool and very acceptable space to be in and operate in. So that was my first comment. And the second piece is I would even offer that here and today, and I'm thinking more of the younger generation, um, I'm, a, I'm an Xer, not a millennial, um, I'm, but I'm right there at that brink of right there before before the X, that it's not so much of wanting to be anti-Black because of I think you sat down and really talked with those, is that, yes, they're comfortable and okay with and proud to be Black. But due to your point, Professor Randall, see the privilege of associating with or even having to code switch, look a certain way, behave a certain way, show up a certain way. And so I often kind of equate it to that whole village piece. I blame my grandma, my mother's generation in how we even operate families. And, and I'm a woman of faith, so I'm gonna use that example, is the reason why there's so many, you know, young people that are not in the in 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 the church house is because my mother <laughs> generation didn't believe that that's where they needed to be uh, to carry that faith and have something that they believed in higher than the issues that they fight face in what I like to call life just be life in. And so I also believe that the same way with, with our history and Black history and being who we are proud to be is that we, we will say that go out and be with who you want to be with do whatever you want would do it want to do so to me it's not so much around anti blackness if you will it's more about i want to do what i want to do when i want to do it how i want to do it but doesn't and, that also is is that also like a reflection of the your generation the x's or millennials or whichever you want to be called having quite honestly particularly for the for those who are black having now the privilege to do that. Absolutely. So that's my but point the privilege exactly. to make to make those kinds of choices and thoughts and 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 decisions. And I don't know that it's necessarily in disregard of the history so much as it is the fact that we know more and they've learned more. And we, Professor Randall, you know, I guess that's you and my our, our generation. I've got a couple of these, whatever you call it yourselves have given them that privilege. My, my, I don't, I don't want to call them kids with the young adults, but they don't take stuff. 
they they are more assertive. They will not be, they don't stand back or stand down. Uh, and, and society has to deal with that. Our society is going to have to deal with that, that group because you're, you guys are out there. Now, I don't know, you know, whether it's faith-based or not faith-based, but there is that, um, that assertion that this group has. And I've seen them here. I've seen them in other places and it's actually kind of fun to watch. <laughs> I don't know. I, I would question whether or not, I don't know. I have no idea. My kids are in their fifties. So <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> which 40, in their forties, and so yeah, they're. I don't know. Millennials are. I'm not ex- sure what it is. <laughs> What's the code word? It is my my grandkids are preteens. So, uh, I have to question when I I don't know that I see that group any different from me when I was a teenager. I wanted to do oh, what yeah. I want oh, yeah. when oh, I yeah. want where I want, and I didn't want my parents telling me nothing about what their generation did. Well, yeah, that's, and that's, 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 and, and oh, black yeah, that's history, true. Black, blackness, blackness was born in part out of a rejection of our parents' value system. Well, the 1969 you know, and, and, City and College and, movement, that <laughs> movement was born of that. Yeah, right. I, and I'm talking more so whole, about who we are oh, or who they are personally, like who they identify, how they want to identify, not necessarily a behavior like actions. Oh, you know, because in in my mind, the generation, my brother is 10 years. I'm in my forties, my mid forties. I don't look it, but I am. My brother is 10 years younger than me. Completely, even the cousins. And as you all imagine, I showed you about my, my parents and how big my family is, how many cousins I have. So to the point is that I don't think it's any different um, than how we wanted to be somewhat, or you all back then some wanted to be somewhat rebellious and it's kind of very similar to a degree. I think I, 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 I guess the point that I was trying to drive home is oh. that I don't think that our, our, we, especially not me, cause I was just, but I'm a little different. Those that are in my age range or anti-black. Um, but to your point is that we have more information and we know, yes, it's available to us, but we don't know it. And so because okay. we don't know it, we cannot connect to it. We cannot relate to it. And to that point, we don't want to hear it. It's not just because. That's another conversation. That's a generational yeah. conversation that we need to really have. Well, I just think it, it, the reality and, is, is that the better we, the better off we came, the better, meaning we live in the nice big house, five, six bedrooms, five cars out in, in the yard, you know, that's what you six said. figures. I'm just kidding. Six bigger jobs. I'm just, you know, being, you know. No, no, no. You're, you're right. I, you know, it's. Except the great majority of us are not living that life. I but you're so, talking about her generation. I think there's a lot I of think that. The great that. majority of her generation is not living that life. That's the life they want. And oh. So that's why I'm getting ready to say, but they aspire. <laughs> So that. even okay. if they de- they don't have and it, their anti blackness is-, is born out of the idea that if they in fact identify too closely with black people, they won't be able to get the things they aspire for. That's that's it's not oh, okay. A, I'm that's another dis- black. Okay, we gotta go. We, but <laughs> that's a discussion. <laughs> we gotta have that discussion. I gotta tell Chef. That's a whole new. That's a whole new show. <laughs> yeah, it sure is because no, I, I to your point of liking it, these young people don't tell them they can't do it because they're gonna try to go out and prove you wrong. They and I, that's yeah, the part. And when they get their ass whipped over the next ten, uh, we went out. Your grandparents went out, and we got our ass whipped by yeah. white people by this capitalist system. And in forty to fifty years, these young people will be where we are. Okay. Well, well, on that note, I'm okay, going to have to close this out. Stop. This is yeah. so exciting. I think we're going to have to, I'm um, going to bid aloha to everyone. I hope you have enjoyed this. This is lively and you'll have some discussions in your own families and your own households about, about this. So thank you all for so much for being a part of today's uh, special, special show. The aloha Chuck and enjoy your time in Mexico. We'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.